Hey guys, just a quick video uh, and a quick intro. So we're gonna put on the Mitsubishi MR Triton <clears throat> nudge bar. This is the factory one, uh, well Mitsubishi made one. And we're gonna throw on a light bar at the same time um, as the nudge bar. So we're gonna use a King's wiring harness and we're also gonna use a piggyback adapter which looks like this. It's not the right one, CMQ one. The MR one, which is from uh, Repco and I'm sure many other places, they also sell one. That's about 35 bucks and the King's harness is about 40. And I'm just gonna show you how I did it. Now I do have a workshop instruction manual which I'll put on um, some slideshows or something so you don't have to download it. But this is how I did it. There's, I couldn't find any other videos out there and I find it really helpful when there are videos because some of the parts, you're not quite sure what to do, especially cutting out the bumper. So yeah, hope you enjoy. If you've got any suggestions, throw them out there. But otherwise, uh, we'll get started. First off, pop the bonnet and we're gonna remove the top cover. Undo the can see them all little plastic screws and clips so you just undo it with a Phillips head and then you just take this off just taking this part out this part of the grill and you'll see in here the little red clips there and there what they are is you just undo the bolt here uh, sorry the little plastic screw same as the uh, top cover and then you you pull it out here and they'll just pop I've already popped them so You'll see little clips there, and then you're up to this stage. Now that you've removed the front top grill, there's three screws here. I've already loosened them. Two, three. Now to remove the side plates. Screwdriver underneath and in, in behind it, so that when I pop the rest of these, it's not just putting too much pressure on the um, on the piece itself. So as you see, it pops off, and then you just undo that screw there. Now we're in the side wheel, wheel well. We're just gonna undo these three bolts. And then up the top here, you have this one little clip to push out. So I've already got the majority of it out. Oh. Got to mention, there were two more of those little clips there and there. You've undone those three and then you do the uh, whatever you call it, these uh, little pop clips up there and the two under here I've already loosened the other side all you'll do is just come here and start popping this off just like that and this will happen all the way through and then what we probably could have done first is undo the harness all right, we've unclipped that and as you can see the bumper just lifts up from the front bought my bumper second hand so this is just you just have to assemble this um, as per the instructions I'm just gonna undo these bolts here and then I'll put it on next to the other one just there yeah, right hand on it hopefully yours does and we're just gonna feed it up through here and it's not gonna fit perfectly right now because we've got to do a little bit of cutting of this hang on I'll just pop the camera there I'll just feed it up and you'll see where the bolts line up just pop that down as you can see the hole there. So this is gonna sit here. Um, and all we have to do is trim, I think they're called air um, deflectors or something like that. We're just gonna trim where the bottom here sits on that. Uh, you can just measure 80 from the end and cut it, but I thought I'll just sit it in place and see what uh, see what I need to cut, um, which I'll show you what, how I'll do it in a second. The other one's set up there. And then, so that's about as much as I cut out. On second thought, I know that probably will annoy me or have an impact, so I'm just gonna cut the corner off. Once you put this back in place. So on the right hand side of the car, we're gonna grab that bolt through. It's just a Q, I think, and then it's, uh, you see the instructions O, but you need your two spaces here, because that's gonna make up the space in between, in between here. So I won't be able to do this one-handed, but I'm gonna put those up in between there, and then thread the bolt with a washer through that and then put the nut and the washer on the other side and I'll come back when I've done it. As you can see, bolts through, two spaces are there to make up the difference and then the nut and the washer is on the other side. And we're just going to take one of those nuts and start to locate a bit. Oh, and I have to do the rest. We're going to go in and we're going to use this side and what we'll do for that is we'll get this so we'll undo 
him. And we're going to bend this washer into about that shape. It'll kick on the end so we can maneuver it. When we put it through this hole, we're able to pop it up, sorry about the focus, and twist it so that when we come around here, and the top here, let's move this plate just a bit forward. Quite fiddly. So that's why you want to have this little bend on the end so you can move it like this. And that helps to line up this with the top there, as you can see. Right, so that's in there now, and you'll see the tail sticking out here. Um, doesn't really say what to do with this, so I'm just going to bend it up out of the way. Just tuck it up there somewhere, and we'll get the other side. We'll do that same process. We'll put the two side bolts in. This one doesn't have spaces. Actually, that's probably a good um, a good thing to show is that this one, because it's not on, doesn't have a space in the recovery point. I'll pop it up. I'll show you. Give us a sec. This one just goes flat on with a uh, nut and bolt on the other side, oh sorry, a washer and a uh, nut on the other side. And then one up there again, and then we'll do the same twisted curly um, washer for here. And then that'll finish off the, um, the bracket arms. A side note, in case you're wondering how I tighten it, I just use a little ratchet. After they're nice and tight, go ahead and assemble the rest of your nudge bar and just pop it on for now, nice and loose. At this stage, I've uh, just secured the two arms to hold the nudge bar. I've just uh, erected mine and put the light bar on and just sat it in place. We already had the light bar bracket which bolts into the, um, the provided mounting points. And why I'm doing this now is so that I can one, put the um, Deutsch, whatever connector on. And I just want to run my harness and um, piggyback off the back of the lights um, connector and just have it set up first so that once I put the bumper and everything on I'm just going to plug in the uh, Deutsch connector and it's all nicely out of the way and um, funnel so I'll quickly show you what I'm using I'm using the Kings plug and play apparently the newer MRs it comes with a H4 or something connector uh, so you don't need to have this piggyback connector but if you do have one of the halogen lights or perhaps yours just has this type of connector which I'll show you at the back of the light soon and uh, there is an MQ version which I did buy as well and they are slightly different you can see at the top where they um, <clears throat> have a little locator pin that's the MR well at least for this uh, vehicle anyway and they look so similar but and they even fits in the lights turn on but for some reason the positive here is it's of the tops the bottom you probably take it out and uh, retrofit it but save yourself the hassle Repco or wherever and just get a um, MR variant one and it'll have it for the little mark on the top left and uh, that's just the harness for the Kings unit put this jungle of mess up here so if it doesn't spark out that'll be to our uh, light bar and the other part we'll want which will go apparently Australian standards you got to have a um, light bar that's switchable from the inside of the cab so this will go over here in the firewall there's a little grommet switch there which I'll show you later but we're just going to set this up roughly here that's going to be our little 12 um, 12 volt uh, piggyback supply which we're going to throw into the connector here and I'll show you that in a second and if you have the newer version apparently that's a uh, H4 connector which you'll see on the uh, for that one but we're going to use this for now and I'll show you uh, how to plug this in and we're going to do it now especially because we get to access the bottom, which is right here, and get two hands, one from below, one from above. So that's gonna go into the light, that's gonna go into the fitting that comes out of the light, into this, which is basically that, and then that is gonna connect up later when we've got everything ready to the 12 volt two-way pin on this. The light switch is gonna push that down, and this is really hard to get off, I've already loosened it, so you have to wiggle it back and forth. Um, this might come out of the little harness it's on, but it doesn't matter, just put it back in. Uh, put the little piggyback connector onto there. Make sure that's connected right and proper. And then connect these two up, which is the ones you just took off. I won't be able to do this one-handed. That into there, and then you'll have your 12 volt, which we'll get out later and put onto this. Uh, for now, before we put the bumper on, I just want to connect up the Deutsch plug, or whatever it's called. And plan of attack here is to feed it down here and see where these other wires are there 
we're just going to pop it in there and just follow the looms and then once we come down to there's nothing moving down here too which is good and then once we come down to this section I'm just going to feed it through here so this is this for context so then what we'll do is we'll bring this across we'll cable tie it along here and then it will come down and I'll meet up the Deutsch plug here and this will just go through the front of the grill which we'll do later see it's cable tied all the way just to follow the loom to make it nice and neat next what we're going to do is remove your fuse because we're going to just prep all the stuff uh, for the wiring harness there's a good video on Kings that show anyway but mount your uh, your relay somewhere I couldn't find anywhere to stand up right like they say so I'll just mounted it here and then we've got the inside plug um, for a switch uh, that's for the lights and then yeah that's That'll be it. We'll connect these up later. It doesn't really matter for now. But we'll just put this through the firewall and get it all ready so that we can just test it before we put the bumpers and everything on, cut the bumpers. And um, so we'll send this through the wall. I'll show you how I do that in a second. But just take a good picture of your connectors to make sure, you know, black's on the right, blue's on the left. And that's like that, just so you um, can reference it. This is where the switch was. So just cable tape, just um, taped it just to a bit of a old hanging wire and I fed it through just where I want it to go behind the back just behind these cables here and what we're going to do is we're going to poke it through this grommet you can see here I've already used it for uh, the electric brakes and that's the location of it uh, you're sure to have it yours may not be used if you don't have electric brakes or anything but you can just poke this through and they should be able to pull it through so I'll come back to you when I pull it through the cab now you can see the wire poking through there just at the end of my finger uh, we're going to route it up the back and then up through here and it was a bit too big this particular plug for the uh, spare mounting plate but I don't have electric key ignition so I decided to um, look at the back of it and it actually fits the plug perfectly so I'm going to grab said plug find out which way it goes and uh, I've already tested it it sits in there quite well and I'll push that in once I'm done. Oh, it's coming out of the firewall now, it's coming up and I'll put this back up after. And that's coming up through here, it's cable tied once there. And just come up through the switch, that's the hole we made, and connected it back up via the photos which took reference later. Now we're just going to, uh, well I've connected the fuse, I'll take you to the front. I've connected the neutral and positive from the light harness, uh, the negative and the positive just um, bolted on and I put the fuse back in before that I also connected the light so now we'll just test it to make sure it works the fuse is back in we'll get the uh, keys put the ignition on now we'll start the ignition turn the lights on because it's daytime uh, pressing this down oh, we're gonna put the high beams on so flick the high beams on you can see the blue light and flicking this down yep she goes on and we'll check the front they are now on with the high beam, so we'll make sure they work, we'll flick them off and make sure the high beams still stay on. Off with the lights, light bars off with high beams on, with the switch off. We're going to take this off, uh, just the nudge bar, um, and we're going to put the bumper back on, make the cuts that we need, and then finish it up. And the last thing is we'll just neaten up this wiring. Right, now we're going to just put the bumper up here, just locate it, and we want to see where these come out of. From just quickly testing it, they come out right about here. So I'm going to try, see if I can not cut as much as I can. The drawing suggests cutting out quite a large part of it. But I'm just going to try to sit it up there, poke it through, and then cut around what I need to, and see what access I have for the bolts. And that way, maybe an easier way, we'll see. So I'll just pop it up and chock it, and we'll see what we're dealing with. I've gone ahead and slid the bumper bar on the two arms you can see it doesn't quite fit perfectly it is a tad high but we're going to mark up just above the arm there and we're going to cut it so it fits perfectly so i'm going to cut it a bit experimental but i got an eight mil drill bit on on here and i'm just going to drill it and see what see what that does again the actual instructions say to use a what is it 30 mil drill bit and cut out quite a large section of this which you still might have to depending on how the bumper sits but I thought I'd try and route out a bit like that well I actually just used a bit of uh, some tin snips and cut through there 
on both sides and uh, cut a little bit more off the top and as you see we are now in the right spot so I'll do that to the other side put the nudge bar on show you how I did this side if I can do it one handed so I've drilled it out and I actually found that if you so soft that if you just run it along like this a bit closer you can uh, basically make the shape you want with that and then just get in here and uh, you can just cut it like so and you can see it dropped because uh, it's no longer resting on the top bit there so we'll just cut cut that section out yay gone and then we should be able to lift this up roughly into place Let's push it back into place nothing screwed as you can see it's still loose but I just wanted to make sure that everything was sitting exactly where it was going to sit even the bolt points uh, when it was uh, just sitting like this so so if you're wondering how much to cut out it is about about that so you, don't, you don't need to cut this massive bit out which uh, they suggest you do but you can if you want to I like this method it was a bit hard to push it on but get a mate don't hurt your uh, finger skin the damn damn nail off ah uh, because I was holding here as it pushed on it just caught and yeah bye bye nail but get a mate push it on and then cut it out as you've seen moment of truth we'll just pop it up here and we'll see if that side goes on that side goes on sliding in and well I can see those holes have lined up we don't need to cut any more off that side or that side and that fits really well so I'll go along and I'll bolt this from under here there we go so I'll throw the bolts in that side and this side and we'll uh, we might as well mount it now and how I got in to fix it the front one was just a straight rattle because this is all just plastic and it does bend out the way the back one I just got a uh, again that's just bends out the way plastic and little ratchet spanner all right, you can mount your light bar wherever you're going to have it and we'll move on to uh, putting the plastics back on and bolting the grill back in same as what we took off all right we'll put our two pop tips underneath the car push that in properly and then we'll put the pop clip up here back in then we'll do up the three bolts and then we'll go to the other side now both wheels Wheel arches have been done. We're going to do the three bolts at the front. Again, just make sure everything's lined up. Uh, might have to get this one. Nope, that was fine. And then after those two, we're going to do the two in the cover, slight side cover, whatever they're called. And just the right hand side. The side bit, make sure the white bits are in there. Locate the left, and that will just pop on along the way and just make sure it's on there well and do the other side before we do the front grill we're gonna re-plug all of our harnesses which is this one and if you did install it install your light bar harness or your spotty harness whatever you you've put on we'll put the top grill on and just locating it into those spots and you're gonna put your two little screw Bizzo's back in there, you can just push them down. I'll just locate that a bit better. And now we'll put the uh, top on. Now we'll just put the top piece back on, and same thing. Just put uh, put your pins, uh, your screws in all of those. There we go. And it's time to do the harness. So we'll just tidy all this up, zip tie it. This final wiring look like, it just comes up, follows around the back. Uh, oh, cable tied on. And then a little bit of a loom here to get rid of some spare. In here, just got the relay, just put a cable tie around it. Just going through the cables, just, I mean, you can get some bumpy roads, but it'll give it its best chance because it's not vertically mounted. And then you've got all your cables, your fuse, and then you've got your two cables going down. One's just loomed up here, which is the 12 volt, and the other one pretty much uh, was the right length that goes all the way down to the uh, 
to the light and that's connected there. So yeah, that's uh, oh, that's the that's the car. So we'll clean up, drop the lid and turn the lights on. Headlights are on. We're going to go high beam. And high beam's off. Yep, high beam's on. It's working. So that was it. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure there's plenty of better ways to do it, including not losing a fingernail. Uh, so if you have any suggestions, pop them in the comments below for anyone else that's going to do it. But yeah, that was it. So hopefully it was helpful. Cheers.